Hi, how are you? I'm Houston, back with another forehead video. I don't know, man. I try so hard to rehearse this stuff. You should see how much of this. You should see how much of this I cut out because I don't know how to speak to a camera. There we go. All right, I don't even know what I'm going to play today. So uh, let's see. I uploaded seven days ago. That was the day before I started the night work. So very unfortunate that I still seem to be shadow banned. It is still under review. And I'm assuming that everybody just went on vacation as well. And if it takes any sort of manual reviewing, then who knows? I'm just like perma shadow banned. And these lobbies are starting to get to me. <laughs> They're pretty bad. It's, it's not good. It's not good. We have holiday shipment. Dude, the only thing holding this game up right now is the the tensile strength of like a string of christmas lights after the new year this game's gonna fall apart i'm just kidding it's siri's talking to me it picked up everything that i was just saying about christmas lights the five best christmas lights of 2022 cold play christmas lights are christmas lights in series or parallel question about batteries circuits all sorts of stuff like that so what's really cool about that work that i did on friday saturday and sunday night is that in three days i worked like 40 something hours so made a lot of money that was great but the thing that i very much dislike is the fact that it was double xp double weapon xp i played the shit out of this game on thursday or Friday morning. I think I got like 12 or 13 guns gold in like eight hours, 10 hours. I mean, maybe that's not playing the shit out of the game, but that's all the time that I had. So that's all I could do. But yeah, with that, I finished Marksman Rifles. I got Platinum Melee. Pretty much finished everything except snipers. Today and yesterday, I was just kind of, I finished the M13 because I was like, why not? And then I'll just do the Chimera as well because you know, just do the ARs. That's that's two less launchers that I have to do. <laughs> and I'm I'm cool with that. Actually, no, that's three less launchers that I have to do because I already did the boss P. If I just do the Chimera and then these snipers, then I have all my golds. You know, a couple friends were saying, hey man, you should really do some of your long shots now because the long shots suck. And I was like, dude, it's fine. Long shots will be easy. And they're like, okay, if you say so. <laughs> so I don't know, maybe I'm putting myself into a hole right now. I'm digging my own grave. I enjoy how shipment plays on this game, but I do have to say that I still have some trouble figuring out what corner I'm in. There isn't really anything to me that seems like characteristic of each corner. Whereas like in the Vanguard one, for instance, it was like, oh, like B flag or can you even play domination on shipment in this? I, I don't even know. I, I see like in Vanguard, it was like, oh, like this is the corner with the Jeep in it. But I feel like all of them just have like boxes now, like boxes, boxes, boxes. See boxes. There's just boxes everywhere. There's no Jeep, no vehicle, like no, no dumpster. My brain needs visual things. Okay. Hey, it's fine, man. Oh, you didn't even get the riot shield kill. That's unlucky. I would have just given it to you though. Here, do it, do it, do it. I know how difficult it is. I know how difficult it can be. <laughs> I'm a man of the people. I think I need like two more levels for this. I got you, bro. So when I was doing my Platinum Riot Shield, there were two guys with Toronto Ultra skins that were just running up to me and stopping just like that. So I am returning the favor. When people do good unto you, you got to do good unto others in return. That was nice. Good skills, man. I felt, I felt bad for my friend Podgy. He was uh, playing in my lobbies. And for one, they're shadow ban lobbies. And two, he was on like 160 ping or something. And he was trying to do his... <laughs> he was trying to do his riot shield challenges. And I was like, damn, man, you, you are suffering heavy right now. <laughs> also, I don't know what was up with the lobbies last night. But dude, I was getting flashed like every three seconds. It was so bad. And the tack mask does like nothing on this game. It's, it's useless. I don't understand. Everybody's so cracked with the marksman rifles. Red dot marksman rifle. Weenie Hut Jr. over here.
What? He's, oh, we didn't spawn right there, man. I'm trying to go off. I mean, of course, the one time that I use it, I just get a hit marker, right? I mean, <laughs> so yeah, with all the planning that went into the pullback on the night shift work, it went really, really well. I mean, we got a lot done and very quickly. And there's a guy laying on my rug in the middle of that box. So all the night work went really, really well. Like, I'm, I'm surprised. I mean, everybody abided perfectly by the plan that went into it. There were a couple hiccups, but it was nothing that, like, disrupted the flow of the work, which I'm really thankful for. It was a really good reminder to me that preparation is really everything. It's like 80% of the job and then 20% is just execution. So I thought that when I would be doing all that work that I would be, like busting my ass the whole entire time like i i would be i'd be moving like for 12 hours straight and it'd be i'd be super tired at the end of it but no what actually happened was so we those the pipes had to be fused together and when you're waiting for the ends of the pipes after they've been shaved with the machine while you're waiting for them to heat up because they're they're high density uh poly and then they get pushed together and then they have to cool down and that whole process for each fuse takes like an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes. So all me and my coworkers had to do was do all the preparation to get the pipe set in. And then the actual fuse technician did all the fusing with the pipe. And there are 10 fuses total. So that's like, like 30 minutes of work to set it up. And then once it's in there, it's like an hour and 45 minutes. And you literally just sit there. There's nothing else to do. Easiest money I've ever made in my life. <laughs> like, and then once we fuse it all together and we push it out onto the water and it was floating and like a barge was controlling it. We had to line it back up inside the hole that got drilled and we set the pipe up on rollers so it could roll through it and you could like hold it in place and then it got pulled all the way back through. That's why it's called a pullback of course. I know I've mentioned these details several times in my other videos but now that I actually did it, I have an understanding of what it looked like and I know that in my last video I was like, yeah, I don't really know what's going to happen. Here's a picture of us doing the pullback like that I took from the seat of my machine. And I it's literally me just sitting there and that's all I did for like for like 14 hours the last night. <laughs> it was so stupid. Oh my god, that's tax dollars. Hey, but the work has to get done, you know. Oh, is this thing level 15 yet? It is. 16. Nice. Yo, bounce throwing knife. Cool, dude. I think I need double kills now. That's nice. <laughs> I don't deserve to be alive. Relax with the fucking flash grenades, dude. Okay. Don't thank me. Just get back in the fight. These double kills are so easy, dude. Whoa, relax. You know, for a second there, I was thinking maybe I can go crazy, bro. Maybe I can fucking, maybe I can drop a nuke just casually while I'm just live calming. But no, not at all. Of course not. Wow. Come on, guys. Let me go off. Let me go the fuck off. So I just got back from a little family vacation over east, drove over the pass like uh, two hours or so. And I went to this little town called Leavenworth. Well, actually I was a little outside of the town at this lodge that uh, me and my family get every year. And by every year, I mean for the past two years. But you know, it's becoming one of those things that we do every year. So I can say that. So we drove over there. Little, uh, little dangerous, I gotta say. There was, uh like a foot and a half of snow that snowed at the summit and it froze so when we were like i don't know maybe like five miles from the summit we got stopped because there were three avalanches that happened that blocked the roads and crews had to go in and clear them so we waited in line that far from the summit for like two and a half hours just sat in our cars my girlfriend and i were like playing this puzzle game on her phone just passing it back and forth figuring out each puzzle so 
We killed the time easily, but once they finally opened it up and a bunch of people turned around, like people waited there for like half hour, 45 minutes. They're like, I'm out of here. It was kind of funny too, because people would turn around and then like 10 minutes later, they let us through and you're like, damn dude. It's, it's like they're driving back and they see cars start to move. So they like, they're like, damn it, they're gonna get back in line. So by the time we actually got over the pass, it was dark and it was still super icy and there's a ton of snow on the ground. But luckily it was that good snow where it like crunches down really easily. It's pretty drivable. And my car's all wheel drive too. So like, I don't have any fear about driving in the snow. I mean, ice is a different story. It doesn't really matter how good your car is. But hey, that's why I own a Subaru. Literally, literally one of the main reasons. Pretty sure the last challenge on this gun is kills from behind and I just, I hate it. I hate it so much. Dude, turn around. Just let me shoot you in the back. So we got down to the lodge and I think it got to like negative three, both nights that we were over there, which is just unbelievable. That's, that's way too much. That's get me out of there. I forgot to bring gloves. My girlfriend was like, you should have brought gloves. And I was like, yeah, I probably should have brought gloves because it was, it was cold. We spent the day over in town one day, went to like a gingerbread factory, which sounds less childish than it actually is. Then we went for a walk along this like snowy path. I got some pictures. I'll throw them up. I brought my drone too. And it was so cold that the battery on my drone, I could see it on the screen when I was flying it. It was literally just going down just like. 88%, 87, 86, like faster than a percent a second, I think. So I was a little worried about the drone going into the river because the path that we were walking along was right next to a river. And when I was flying it, I was like, okay, well, um, the GPS is working. So that's, that should be fine. Like it should return to me if anything goes wrong. But I think the cold messed with it a little bit too much because Later on in the day when I was on my way back to the lodge, I was like stopping along these side roads that I was driving on in order to maybe like get some better shots of the windy roads. Cause there's nothing like a drone shot above windy roads. It is, it's one of the best things on the planet. So I pulled off on the side of the road at this just random place. Cause I thought that it would look good and the sun was setting as well. So it was going to be a great shot. Like looking back over the snowy mountains and the sun was setting, had some nice reds and oranges in the sky just beautiful. So I get my drone up like 20 yards from me and maybe like 70 feet in the air. The whole entire thing just yeets off into the forest. No indicator, nothing. It just flies away into the forest and then it crashes into the snow, two feet of snow on the ground. So luckily I had like this big pair of boots in the trunk of my car. So I was like, I went, I went like parent mode. Like I like, I went, I was, I thought I was saving a child. So I quickly ran to my car, unlaced the shoes that I had on, put the boots on. And I'm like looking at the GPS on my phone where the drone crashed. And it still, it still says it's on too. Like it didn't break or anything. I start trekking through this snow and it's going like up to my waist. Like it, it was so deep. And I find this little patch like this big, I have a Mavic Air, so it's not a huge drone. But still, it hit the powder and like the powder flew over and just covered the drone. There was just this little patch in the snow. The drone was just sitting there on and I grabbed it and I kind of like brushed off the snow that was on it. And then I put it next to the heater in my car. And when I got back to the lodge, I flew it up and took even more pictures. I love taking photos too. I mean, I don't, I don't know if I've ever mentioned that on here. I'm a really big fan of film, but I never really got into like that side of, of creating images. I always wanted to, but I think that I just... I don't know. My excuse for a long time was, oh man, I just don't want to edit anything. But I think the filming part is even harder. If I didn't want to edit anything, then I wouldn't be able to edit these YouTube videos. Or maybe it's just the type of person that I was when I tried to make those kinds of videos. Maybe it's just who I was back then that didn't really enjoy editing or filming for that matter. But if I picked it up now, it would be a different story. That's nice. Great. Good flashes. They're doing their knifing challenges. <laughs> Try to be understanding. Try to be understanding. Yeah, we actually ended up leaving the cabin about a day early because if we would have stayed, there was like this freezing rainstorm that was coming in and the temps were getting like down to like, I don't know, 10 degrees or something like that. And freezing rain under snow, that's not a good combination at all because driving on snow is not that bad. But when it rains, then it ices over, and then it snows. That's a different story. And anybody that lives in a place that snows a lot definitely understands that. So we got back home yesterday afternoon about... We hit a little bit of traffic on the way home. But other than that, it was pretty good. Pretty nice drive. Much better drive than on the way there. Not as pretty, though. 
I mean, all the snow driving there was just amazing. And some of it was melted by the time we drove back over the pass. No matter how the weather is, though, there is never a shortage of psychos on the road. <laughs> like, dude, there was a Honda Civic, like a 95 Honda Civic, driving on the pass, like trying to get over the pass. I was like, dude, what are you doing, man? All the Department of Transportation rules said that the weather was to the point where if you did not have an all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive car, you have to have chains on. And this dude is in a Honda Civic, probably front wheel drive, maybe. I know some of them are rear wheel, I, at least I think. And trying to go over the pass, no chains. <laughs> and I'm just like, dude, do you want to die? There's never a shortage of people that just blow your mind. Like they think they're the one. They're like, dude, I'm him. Like I'm main character. I got this. Like I know I can get over the pass. I'm a good driver. <laughs> it's and then and then there are also people that are just driving like the normal speed limit it's like dude if you you know just change lanes too fast then you're literally just going to keep going <laughs> like either into oncoming traffic or into the barrier or the snow barrier at least and i there was somebody that did that they tried to pass somebody on the left and then they got over too quick and their nose just kept going and they're just like high centered on the on the snow bank <laughs> you got to be patient out there not only patient with yourself but patient with other drivers you just never know you could be a great driver yourself but there's always some crazy people out there just doing crazy people things so seven more kills from behind to get this sick cheetah print dude snow leopard not cheetah print. Speaking of snow, based off all the new amount of communication that has come from Raven and Infinity Ward, but mostly Raven about updates for this game, I'm feeling pretty confident. I really don't want to wait for like season two for this game to be everything that I know it can be. I had a great time. That was a much needed vacation, especially after all that work that I did. And now I have until Tuesday off. So Christmas is in a couple days. Yeah, two days. Tomorrow's Christmas Eve. Damn. Um, taking my girlfriend to the airport today. A lot of driving. Too much driving. I just want to stay home. I want to be right here in my cave for the next like three or four days. That's like literally all I want. Hopefully my schedule at work equalizes more as well where I can just like chill and everything can just go back to normal and I can get back in my routine. That's really all I want. But you know how the holidays are. It's just like insane. You're always traveling to all these places. At least most people are. You're spending time with family and you should, you should spend time with your family. Tell your parents you love them. Call them. If you can, call them right now. Tell them you love them or just text them. Just anything, literally, or just any family that you have. Do it. You really never know how much that stuff might mean to people. And I feel like a lot of people just underestimate that here's the thing that will always be true if you had a friend that you always thought about or a family member anybody and you were like damn i should text them nah they'll, they might think that's weird though I, I, i'm not gonna do that i'm not gonna do that but think about it in reverse if that person randomly texted you you'd be psyched like you'd be like oh man oh, i've been thinking about so and so i've been thinking about joe schmo like damn i'm really glad they texted me so get a hold of people let them know this is a great time, but again, like I talked about when I was talking about gratitude, any time's a great time. If the last moment wasn't a good time, then this moment's a good time. And it's probably a good time to end this video. I appreciate you again. I am seeing you before Christmas, so Merry Christmas again. Happy Holidays, uh, Hanukkah. Hanukkah started on Monday, right? So whatever you celebrate, if you don't celebrate, if you do, it's not up to me, as long as you're happy, right? So take it easy. I appreciate you. Thank you for watching. Be nice to people. And I'll see you on the next one. One more thing. I just want to say that I'm incredibly grateful to everybody that has come by the stream lately, especially people that have come from YouTube to my stream. That's just insane to me. For those of you that don't know, I donate 20% of the money that I make on Twitch to charity, mostly through GiveWell and uh, the organization called Effective Altruism. They help vet charities to make sure that the money is doing the most good, not the just the good that makes you feel good because generally the things that make you feel the best when you give aren't the most effective the data shows that maybe being a little bit more data driven about it helps you give more and help more people i've been doing this for a couple years now and seeing the amount of money that i have given and that people that have come by the stream and eventually this youtube channel have helped give and all the people that we've helped together, 
it really does mean a lot to me. And I wanted to come back on here and say that because I just gave this month's amount of money to give well to their maximum impact fund because I sort of switch it around and donate to different parts on their site. So again, thank you. You are just as much a part of this as I am. And especially during a season like this where not a lot of people have things and they are reminded vigorously by media and by the environment around them that they don't have as much as other people, you are helping those people see that there is a little bit of light in the world. There's a lot more light than a lot of us are led to think at least. So again, thank you so much and I appreciate you.